This here is an A-Box starter kit for a Raspberry Pi, which is absolutely perfect for someone like me who has never even touched a Raspberry Pi before. Today, I'm gonna show you guys what's all in this starter kit and show you my very first experience with a Raspberry Pi. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna be checking out my very first experience with the Raspberry Pi using this A-Box starter kit. And if you wanna see more tech videos or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's dive into this thing. Before getting into what's in the starter kit, I wanna quickly introduce the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus by itself. This device is rocking a quad-core ARM processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz and has one gigabyte of RAM. It also has four USB 2.0 ports, a micro SD card slot, a full-sized HDMI port, and also sports built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2. Moving on to this A-Box starter kit, it's packing a ton of cool features that help me get up and running quickly. Inside the box was a simple and clean black case, a USB-C micro SD card reader, a micro USB power cable with a switch to turn the device on and off, some heat sinks to place on the PCB, an HDMI cable, and a 32 gigabyte Samsung SD card. The micro SD card came in installed with an operating system installer called Noobs, and this was super easy to use and it just lets you pick from a list of operating systems that you want to install on your Raspberry Pi. Finally, the last part in the box was the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, obviously, and it was time to install it into the case. There's only one way for it to fit in, so it really wasn't that difficult. One thing to note is that you should install the heat sinks after installing it in the case, so you don't have any issues with the placement of them fitting inside the case. After everything was installed, I plugged in a keyboard, mouse, and monitor and fired up the Raspberry Pi with a preloaded SD card and was ready to install an operating system. The recommended version was Raspbian, which I've heard of before, and I decided to give this one a shot. The setup was pretty simple, you just connect your router via Wi-Fi or Ethernet, select your language, and before you know it, you'll be loaded into the Raspbian OS. From here, it looks pretty much like a standard operating system. You start out here on your desktop, the Chromium web browser is already installed for you, and you can click the taskbar in the upper left-hand corner to start sorting through all of the other other applications and games that are included. If you click help and then click the getting started button, that'll launch an actually pretty useful starting guide if you're lost or confused like I was. At this point in the setup, everything went pretty smoothly and I was pretty much on my own to start exploring and installing what I wanted on my Raspberry Pi, but the thing is, I don't really have an actual purpose for this Raspberry Pi yet, so I was kind of just messing around on it for a while. The first thing I decided to do was fire up some games to see how the 1.4 GHz processor could run, and it was very convenient that Minecraft was already installed. Here you can see that Minecraft is actually running way better than expected, at least in my opinion. This is only the Pi version of Minecraft, mind you, but still, I found it pretty cool. For installing other games, if you don't want to use the terminal command line interface, you can simply go to the add remove program suite and search for games and applications from there. Other than games though, the only thing else that I really wanted to do was kind of make it into a torrenting box of some sort. For this, I would need a VPN service and a torrenting software. And no, I'm not downloading anything illegal. For the VPN service, you guys know I had to go with my number one recommendation, which is always NordVPN. NordVPN is my top choice for VPNs because of their military grade encryption, super fast peer to peer servers, and I actually subscribed to them at full price way before they hooked up my subscribers with a discount code. If you go to nordvpn.com slash Zach, you'll get a discounted rate of like two bucks a month, which is super cheap for what you're getting. One thing to note here is that you're actually using a piece of software called OpenVPN. You still end up connecting to NordVPN servers and it was fairly easy to set up. Finally, the last thing left to do was get a torrenting software and I found online that Deluge was pretty much the go-to choice here in 2018. Once installed, it looks pretty much like a BitTorrent or a uTorrent and combined with my NordVPN, I felt like I was good to go for downloading things. So yeah, that was pretty much my first afternoon with the Raspberry Pi. Like I said, I don't really have a purpose for this thing, so I wanna hear from you guys about what either I should do with this Raspberry Pi or what you guys are currently doing 
doing with your pies. I'm also definitely glad that Abox hooked me up with their starter kit because I definitely would have purchased all of this stuff separately if I didn't have it. You don't want to run a Raspberry Pi without a case, at least in this type of environment. The USB cable with a power switch is super clutch so you don't have to pull the plug to turn off the device, and having that preloaded SD card in there made setup way easier. Well that wraps up my review of the Abox starter kit and my personal start of my adventure into the Raspberry Pi universe. Like I said, I am definitely not a Raspberry Pi expert, so please don't take anything that I said today as expert advice. I probably messed a few things up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos. I think I just spit. <laughs>